Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the last session of, of, uh, of Pi Data DC. Uh, thank you all for coming to my talk. Uh, I'm sure everyone is very tired uh, uh, from, from this long conference, but it's, um, uh, uh, it's a real uh, uh, pleasure to have you in my, in my talk today. So uh, my name is Konstantinos. I am a grad student at the University of Maryland. Uh, currently, I'm doing my PhD there at the Computer Science Department and I'm um, doing research on database systems. Uh, uh, so today I'm very excited to talk to you, to talk a little bit about uh, the project that I've been working on over the past few months uh, on conducting graph analytics over relational databases uh, so using a system that we're developing called GraphGen. And this is work that I've uh, worked with very closely with my advisor, Professor Amol Deshpande. Uh, so we're all more or less familiar with the uh, graph data structure. So this is a property graph. You have uh, entities uh, uh, that are the nodes that are connected to each other through relationships, which are uh, represented as edges here. So uh, uh, as you can see, I, I can basically just take the, the uh, uh, intro slide and turn it into a graph here. That would look like this. And this is, uh, uh, graphs are actually very intuitive that way, so uh, uh, you can uh, very easily understand what, what, what uh, the entities and the relationships in this graph uh, mean. And I can also add sort of extra nodes here if I wanted to, uh, to, to make this graph more complex and, and add more information to it. So graphs are, are this simple data structure uh, that um, allow us to gain significant insight. So the way that we do that is through graph analytics. Uh, uh, graph analytics is sort of this, this uh, phrase that is in my title and you hear about a lot. So I just want to define it. Uh, what, what I mean by graph analytics is, is basically the leveraging of connections between entities in a network uh, uh, towards gaining insight about said entities, right? But also gaining insight about the network as a whole overall. So uh, uh, using, using uh, graph algorithms, uh, which are sort of algorithms that uh, let, that use these connections between these entities to 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 learn about the interactions of these entities in the network. We can we can uh, find out uh, how sort of the world works in this uh, in this sort of network that we're working with. So we can learn things about individual entities that we're interested in, but also about sort of the overall network as a whole. Um, so. Uh, what's the big deal about graph analytics? Uh, why, uh, why should we care about them? Is the first thing that I want to talk about. Uh, uh, as it turns out, graphs uh, uh, come up in a variety of different domains. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind is social networks. You have things like Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn, where you have entities connected to each other if they're friends or if they're following each other. Uh, however, you can also find these complex structures in things like, uh, for example, uh, the domain of say biology or genomic, genomics, you, you have protein interaction networks, you can have financial transaction networks, stock trading networks, uh, uh, the knowledge graph that people have been using for, for AI is also a, a very complex network. Uh, uh, the internet, the World Wide Web is a network of web pages that are connected to each other through hyperlinks, communication networks, citation networks, computer networks, it's all sort of, uh, uh, you, ca you can find the, the network structure in a lot of different domains and, and there is a lot of value in looking at it and trying to figure out how things interact. And that's what you do with graph analytics. Um, and so some of the, really quickly, some of the very, uh, some of the example use cases that people have done, uh, people use graphs to define, uh, to, uh, to detect financial crimes like money laundering, fraudulent transactions, cyber crime to, to do counterterrorism. Um, uh, you can do. You can also do things like find who are the key players in a in a network. For example, let's say you're uh, you want to analyze your email network. You want to see who are the most important people that, that other people tend to, to contact more often, and uh, that sort of uh, are in between various clusters in your graph. Uh, things like ranking entities, like what Google does with PageRank. Uh, uh, also providing connection recommendations between users. So when Facebook or Twitter uh, uh, gives you those kind of annoying uh, 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 recommendations about who to follow or who to, to send a friend request to, that is uh, a, a result of graph analytics. Also things like optimizing transportation routes, identifying weaknesses in networks. Uh, uh, also you can do uh, uh, 
graph analytics have also found application in medical research, uh, uh, things like disease pathology and uh, uh, also DNA sequencing. So there, there's these thing, the, these things that are called De Bruijn graphs that people use to uh, to do sequencing and uh, assembly of uh, of uh, DNA. So lots of different uh, uh, valuable use cases for graphs. So how are graph analytics done currently? Uh, um, what are sort of the types of, of, of analyses that people do on top of graphs? Uh, there are various different types of ways that people analyze graphs. One of them, the most simple one, is people do graph queries on them. So people search for a specific node uh, uh, or for a specific subgraph that they might be interested in. They do uh, graph pattern matching to find sort of specific patterns that they might want uh, uh, inside of a graph. Um, and so the, this, this is sort of one way that people interact with graphs. Another, another one which I think is very interesting is real-time analytics. So uh, a, a lot of the time people want to, people want to see what happens and they have a dynamic graph where, where nodes are coming in, nodes are leaving, edges get formed, edges get deleted, uh, uh, and they want to see what, what happens in this graph over time. And they want to sort of uh, uh, figure out what's going on in, in real time. So if someone who is very crucial to the network leaves the graph, uh, then that might be sort of uh, uh, that might be bad for for the network or for the uh, app specific application. You would want to detect that in real time. So real time uh, anomaly detection and event detection is also something that people do. Uh, also batch analytics, the vast majority of graph analytics happen in batch, sort of you have this uh, uh, single static graph or uh, uh, instance or snapshot of a dynamic graph that you load in and you uh, want to do some analysis on top of that. Uh, like centrality analysis, community detection, things that, uh, uh, that I talked about in the previous slide. So uh, most of, of what we call network science happens uh, in this space. And lastly, uh, uh, people have been doing machine learning with graphs as well. So things like matrix factorization, logistic regression can be modeled as message passing algorithms on top of sort of specially structured graphs. Uh, and uh, if, if you're interested in sort of learning about more about uh, this space, uh, uh, we have a blog post that uh, uh, Professor Deshpande has written at go.umd.edu slash graphs, where you can sort of learn more about uh, demystifying graph analytics. and It's a very good blog post. Um, so now I want to talk a little bit about the state of the art of, of what systems are out there and what people are using to do all these different types of analyses. Uh, so as it turns out, as I, as I told you, there are various different ways that people uh, analyze graphs, uh, use to analyze graphs. And the tasks are, are, are too widely varied in some sense because uh, all of the different uh, uh, anal types of analytics that I've mentioned in the previous slide require different uh, ways to uh, uh, different optimizations in terms of how the gra how the graph is stored and how the data is stored and how and how the data is 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 read in order to to do these types of things uh, optimally right and so of course as with a lot of things there's no one size fits all solution to uh, each of these problems there are uh, systems like hadoop spark and relational databases that uh, that people use for a lot of these things but uh, those systems have their trade-offs, and it's generally a very fragmented area, and there's little consensus about what the best system is to use for any given use case. Uh, so you have things like specialized graph databases like Neo4j, Titan, uh, uh, BlazeGraph, Kaylee. All these systems uh, are basically native graph databases where, where your data is stored uh, in a way to optimize for, uh, for graph updates and graph analytics. You have RDF stores that store uh, uh, your data in RDF triples for, uh, for pur the purposes of something like a knowledge base. Uh, you have this interesting space that's coming up uh, of bolt-on solutions to gra graph analytics. So solutions that, that have sort of a layer on top of an already existing database that uh, allows for uh, easily applying graph analytics uh, on your underlying data without you having to, to do anything to your data. So I will talk more about that in a little bit. And there's also the space of distributed batch processing systems like Giraffe, GraphX, which is a part of Spark, and GraphLab, which are, are essentially systems that uh, uh, are very good at doing um, distributed uh, 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 analytics on, on sort of 
arbitrarily sized graphs. These are very scalable systems and they're built for this. But in order for you to be able to use them, you need to uh, take your data and, and do a lot of ETL in order to get it to that format that will allow you to load them into your system and then write your analysis on top of it. And there are many more research prototypes that uh, 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 my community is looking into currently. Uh, and so I want to sort of uh, uh, quickly go through the difference between these, these uh, analytics flows when you have these systems. So for example, if you have a graph database, your data is inherently a graph underneath the hood. Uh, and that sort of helps you uh, by, uh, by enabling graph updates in a consistent and correct manner and also just directly applying graph analytics on top of it because it's already a graph, right? Uh, the second is sort of those bolt-on solutions that I talked about that have this layer that help you more easily express uh, graph analysis on data that's not necessarily stored as a graph, but uh, uh, the system, this layer sort of uh, uh, automatically creates the graphs from the underlying data store and brings them up. And this is what uh, systems like these have been doing. Uh, other systems, uh, uh, the distributed graph processing systems that I mentioned, you have to do a lot of manual ETL interaction with the database itself, uh, and uh, and then manually sort of store the data into the into these systems and and let let that run. So uh, okay, so it's it's sort of a mess, right? The the question that is probably on your mind is, okay, I want I have this simple graph analysis task in my head that I want to do just to see sort of what I will get. What should I use? So uh, there are a lot of questions you need to ask, or your organization needs to ask itself uh, uh, regarding this: is what. First of all, what fraction of the overall workload is going to be graph oriented? Uh, how often are you going to do these sort of graph analytics? Is it just going to be a one-off thing that you want to do once? Or is this something that you want to run every day or every week, every month, maybe? Um, do you need graph updates? Do you have sort of a dynamic uh, 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 situation where you want, uh, where sort of graph updates are coming in uh, in a uh, um, in, in, in high uh, uh, a velocity and you want to support something like this to your graph. What types of analytics are required? So we talked about the different types of analyses that, that people do on it. Do you want to do machine learning on it? Do you want to do uh, batch analytics or do you want real-time analytics? And how large is the graph going to be? Uh, this is a big one, right? So if your graph fits in memory, then uh, uh, you have lots of Lots of different options you can use. If your graph is is sort of very large, then you need a distributed system. Then sort of your choices kind of uh, uh, get filtered from there. And another thing that I think is very important is: Are you starting from scratch, or do you already have a already de deployed database or sort of a flow of data that's coming in, and you like the way it is? It works for you uh, uh, for everything else that you're doing right now, but you just want to do some sort of graph analysis on top of that. So I'll just leave you with these questions for now and uh, um, uh, go into what, what most people are dealing with, right? So uh, the, first, the first question that, that I would ask if I wanted to do this is where is, is where is the data that I currently want to analyze as a graph? I want to see it as a graph and analyze it as a graph. Um, so organizations would typically model their data according to what that organization is doing, right? So uh, uh, you would only use something like a graph database, at least in my opinion, if you if your workloads are, are strictly graph centric. If you're uh, sort of a Twitter or Facebook of the world and and your your base sort of analysis is 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 graph oriented. However, most business analytics that almost everyone does is my is my guess, uh, like querying, reporting, uh, analytical processing, those things happen in SQL. And uh, um, the vast majority of the time, um, people use SQL enabled systems. So most likely, your data will be organized in some sort of a database schema. You'll have uh, 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 at least at a logical level a collection of tables. Uh, or classes that are related to each other through common attributes that we call primary or foreign key constraints. So your schema would kind of look either either like the one on the left, uh, which is a normalized schema, or like the one on the right, which is like a denormalized star schema, or anything in between. Um, uh, and what you need to do in order to uh, see this data as a graph, you need to extract the connections and to extract the entities. So you first you need to define what 
what the entities are in the graph that you want to analyze and what and how those entities should be connected to each other, right? And so, as I said, most likely your data is going to be in a SQL-enabled data store, uh, uh, perhaps a relational database that people have been using for many years now uh, for, uh, for their uh, very strong integrity and consistency guarantees. Um, and so the, the next thing I want to go into is that there is a lot of hidden graphs that may exist. So your, your, your data will be, uh, my assumption is that your data will be on top of some sort of schema, right? You will have a schema even though, even if you're using a NoSQL database, you would still have some sort of schema on it. And there was a great talk yesterday that talked about this, if you, if you guys were there. Um, uh, and so given the fact that there is a schema, right? Uh, there's a lot of hidden graphs, a lot of different ways that you can define uh, uh, your entities and the relationships between them in your data. So let's say that we have a schema like this. This is a, a variation of the TPCH database, which has a, uh, which is basically, which basically describes a data set of customers that are connected, uh, that, that, that have ordered uh, a set of parts and there's also information about each part and about the supplier for each part. So let's say that we wanted to create a graph uh, where our nodes are the customers, uh, and we want to connect it. To, we wanted to connect them with each other in some way. So there's a variety of different ways you can do that. You can say, I'm, I want to connect customers to each other if they bought the same item. I want to connect them if they bought, let's say, the same item on the same day. Perhaps you can go there. Or you can say, if they bought uh, from the same supplier. Uh, uh, and there's a lot of different ways you can sort of define what the connections between those entities will, will look like. And so uh, this is what I call hidden graphs inside of your data. Right, um, and you can also define many. There's also many different ways to define which which are the nodes in your graph. So you can say I I might want to analyze a graph of suppliers if let's say suppliers um, uh, sold products in the same uh, in the same uh, I guess area, right, or in the area with the same area code. Um, so. If we, if we go back to the state-of-the-art slide uh, with all these different systems, what I want to do is I want to focus in on these bolt-on, the idea of these bolt-on solutions. The idea of you already have a database that, that you like, uh, uh, how your data flows in, everything works. You don't want to change that, but you still want to apply some sort of graph analysis on some, th some data that exists inside of there. So that's basically what our vision is for this system. What we want to do is we want to enable this bolt-on analytics capability on top of any database that has, uh, um, that has SQL support, essentially, and is governed by some sort of schema. And as you saw uh, in, in this slide, uh, most of the, most of the bolt-on solutions that are out right now are highly proprietary. So, the, so Oracle's solution is significantly different than SAP's solution, and it only works for Oracle. Right, and the same for SAP and Teradata, and anyone else who has done this. Um, okay, so GraphGen is the system that we're building at at Maryland, and uh, what what GraphGen does is it, it, its its goal is to enable users to extract and analyze many different types of graphs. I, I mentioned many hidden graphs that may exist in your in your data, and we do this. Uh, using a simple and intuitive declarative language that we've defined uh, uh, based on data log that will enable you to do this very easily and very fast without the, without the need for you to do any sort of ETL in order to you know, combine tables in your data uh, manually and extract the, the, the graphs yourself. And after that, the system also enables, uh, 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 it exposes a full graph API and a vertex-centric framework so that you, so as soon as you extract your graph, you can like on the fly uh, write your analysis task and run anything on top of it. Um, so GraphGen has a bunch of interfaces that you can interact with. Uh, one of them is the GraphGen Explorer, which is a web application that we've built uh, uh, that, that is built towards um, uh, that is built towards uh, exploration of these hidden graphs that I talked about in your data set. Uh, uh, GraphGen is uh, uh, natively written in Java, so 
uh, we also have a native Java library, obviously, that you can use. And because I heard this conference is uh, uh, has a lot of people that like Python, we also have a Python wrapper library over this thing so that you can use it uh, through a Python script. So that's even easier. Um, so now I'd like to go into and show you what the uh, GraphGen Explorer web application looks like. Uh, so first of all, the 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 idea of this of this web app and, and why we thought it was uh, necessary or, or why it's cool is because it allows ex this exploration of your schema and what types of different graphs may exist in there that may be uh, uh, interesting to analyze. Um, it allows visual exploration of these graphs uh, uh, as well as simple statistics and on-the-fly analysis uh, of, of the graph that you want to that you want to extract. And the idea here is that not all graphs uh, that you might think are, are interesting are going to be useful in the end. So for example, uh, uh, if you would go ahead and try to extract a graph of suppliers that have um, you know, uh, sold their products in the same area, you may find that this is a completely uninteresting graph where like, uh, perhaps you know, uh, suppliers have all uh, are all selling in, 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 in every area, right? It's completely bipartite graph or something like that. Um, so this is what the system looks like if, uh, yeah. So uh, first, the user can go to the left and connect to the database. So uh, uh, they can provide their credentials in the database that they want to connect to, and they click connect. So as soon as that happens, the schema gets loaded into the left-hand side so that you can look at it and see uh, what sort of uh, potential graphs you might want to, 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 to extract. And then you can write your query in our, in our query language on that box or uh, generate a query automatically with uh, a graph enumeration framework that we built that I'm not going to get too deep into, um, um, but in this, in this specific video I'm automatically generating it. Uh, and then, so after that query is in there and you click extract, what happens is the graph gets loaded in and you get a visual representation of a small portion of it, because uh, uh, you know visualizing large graphs is, is very is is very difficult in general. So what you want to do with this web app is just sort of explore the structure. Uh, uh, how many how many nodes are connected to each other? What are uh, are there sort of many nodes that are by themselves? Are are there you know many complex connections, or is this sort of a boring graph? Uh, you can fetch uh, uh, random samples of the graph to see what's going on, and also using that uh, text box right there, you can uh, define a specific uh, predicate to, to get a, gra a specific a neighborhood, the one hop neighborhood of a specific node that you might be interested in uh, looking at. And you can also do things like fetch, uh, um, uh, like uh, let's say fetch the top 20 nodes based on their node degree uh, and and sort of uh, look at those as a list. So you can do simple queries like that. Uh, also on the right hand side you can see there are some uh, um, uh, important properties of the graph like the number of nodes, the number of edges, the density, and the max degree and you can also see the degree distribution of the nodes uh, on, uh, on the right hand side over there. And lastly, using that green box, uh, uh, that green button on the right-hand side, you can actually serialize the graph into a standardized format like GML or GraphSon or GraphML. And, uh, and uh, after that, you can sort of take that file from your file system and load it into uh, a batch processing system or Network X or anything else you might want to do with it. So this is what the web application looks like. Um, uh, GraphGenPy is a library that we've built over the system uh, that uh, uh, is built for usage in, in Python, and uh, this is a simple uh, example of how you would how you would go about using it. So it's very simple. You need to simply define your query in our language. Um, define the database credentials so that you connect to the database that you want. Uh, uh, generate and serialize the graph by calling the generate graph method and, and putting in uh, uh, the format that you want. Loading the graph into Network X or any other uh, uh, library graph tool or anything else you might you might want, and then running an algorithm on it. So, as you can see, with six lines of code, I was able to uh, extract a graph and run PageRank on it. So I think this is uh, very powerful in that in this regard. Um, and 
Lastly, you can use GraphGen in Java, sort of the, na the, the native way to use it, uh, which is more or less the same. You, you um, uh, connect to a database, you define your query, uh, extract the graph, and then you can for, uh, one way is you can use the vertex-centric framework that we have. So if you're familiar with this framework, you define a compute function and you tell each node what uh, operations to, to, to do at each super step. So if you're familiar with the vertex-centric framework, you can use that uh, natively in our system and it's uh, fast and, and, uh, and, and runs pa in parallel in your, uh, uh, on your machine. Uh, and uh, you can also sort of have direct access to the graph and just say, you know, for, uh, for, for every node, uh, give me its neighbors. And with that, you can do arbitrarily complex stuff, uh, arbitrarily complex analysis on top of it. Um, yeah, so the, the, uh, the, the reason you would use the, our native Java API is because uh, you can actually load the, uh, the graph into memory using, using this and your... Uh, um, you're actually interacting with the graph uh, directly here. So this is sort of why you would go about using our, our native Java framework. And we have various optimizations that we've developed as part of, 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 research, of this research project uh, to, make, to make loading the graphs as efficient as possible here. Um, yes? So is there an upper limit for a lot of entities that can support Uh, so the upper limit is is uh, in in the is is basically what how large your memory is, right? It depends on on how large your memory is. Uh, but uh, we have we have various optimizations under the hood that allow you to to actually uh, load in graphs that normally wouldn't fit in memory. So uh, yeah, we have a lot of optimizations there. But but the upper bound is 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 always going to be the size of of your memory because we're loading that into memory. Is it always can you like? We don't have that capability yet, uh, but uh, we are definitely looking into 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 what we can do with sort of parallelizing this system. But for now, this is sort of uh, how, uh, how large of, of, of a graph you would be able to load in uh, in memory in one machine and analyze it. And you'll be surprised how, how large graphs you'll be able to do that with. So um, let me see how I'm doing on time. OK, so the, just really quickly, the back end architecture of the system looks like this. You have the three interfaces that I talked about with the system, and the system sort of uh, expects a query in our, in our, in our language. Um, that, that query goes ahead and gets translated into SQL queries underneath the hood automatically. Those queries are, are uh, executed against the database. The data gets, gets loaded in efficiently, and then the user sort of gets a handle on, on the graph object. And it's as simple as that. Um, so. Sorry. So um, uh, I've been I've been sort of glossing over this language that we've that we've uh, developed, and I will I will now talk about talk about the GraphGen language. So what the, uh, this language is is a, a domain specific lang language we've developed that that looks a lot like data log in terms of its syntax. Um, and uh, the only thing that user needs to do using our language is to specify two things: how the nodes are defined in the graph and how the edges are defined. The query is then, as I said, executed uh, automatically, uh, uh, and the user gets a handle on a graph object in return. Uh, this allows for uh, uh, graphs that have multiple. So it's it's a we've we've tried to make it as expressive as possible, so you can have graphs with multiple different types of nodes as well as multiple different types of edges. Uh, so let's take an example of how you would write a query in, in our language. Let's take the same database that we had before, uh, and let's say we want to explore a graph of customers. Uh, uh, what we what we need to do using the language is we need to see which of these which of the tables in this schema would we need to combine in order in order to extract the nodes and the edges of our graph. Um, uh, so clearly, the customers table is 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 what would define our nodes in this graph. And then if you look, if we wanted to say extract a graph of customers that are connected if they've bought the same item, then we would have to uh, combine the orders table in this case, because that's what sits between uh, the customers and the parts table. So uh, and it, this, is, this table is what has the information about which customer uh, has bought which item. And then combining that w will give us the graph that we want. 
So as an example, this statement, uh, so the, the, the graph uh, extraction statement for, for this graph would just be two, two statements. Here, the nodes would be defined by a customer table. So this statement creates a node for each row in the customer table and gives them an ID and a name as properties. Um, and this statement here combines the, the orders table with itself. It does a join on part key so that uh, the result of this table is inherently uh, the edge list that we want. It's basically uh, uh, the customers that have bought the same item. And so what this says is connect ID1, customer with ID1 to customer with ID2 if they've bo both ordered the same part in this database. Um, so just to recap, what GraphGen is, is basically uh, the goal that we have for it is we want to enable extraction of different types of hidden graphs that you may have inside of your data, uh, independently of where that data is stored, uh, as long as uh, uh, you're, you're, you, you have some sort of inherent schema and you have SQL support. And we want to enable arbitrarily complex analytics on top of it uh, uh, using our AP, the APIs that we're exposing to you. Uh, the second sort of thing that is more of the research side of this project is how do we make this efficient? Uh, uh, we have a various in-memory representations that we've, that we've developed in order to make the extraction as efficient as possible that, that should take as little time as possible and should also take as little memory as possible. So we can uh, have as large graphs as we can in, that fit in memory and, and are analyzable. Um, and also we, uh, we we have an efficient parallel execution engine uh, that you can use to run things on, on, on your one machine for now. Uh, also, the most important thing, I think, here, for at, at least for, for uh, everyone here, is that this, is, this should be very easy, right? We've designed this to be effortless, so, so you can really easily, with two lines of code, uh, uh, define what graph you want to extract using our language, which would eliminate the need for co any complex ETL in order for you to, to, to get that graph out of there. And so what the overall goal of this system is to enable intuitive and swift analysis of any uh, graph that exists inside of your data. Um, so uh, you can download GraphGen currently at this website, uh, which I also have a very extensive sort of blog post that will help you use the, the language and learn how to, uh, how to write queries on it. I have various examples in there. And I also have a, uh, a blog post at District Data Labs, which I'm sure you guys have, have heard about by now, uh, um, uh, which is at that link. I will upload the slides uh, 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 later today. And so I, I am uh, very open to any sort of feedback about the system. Please uh, uh, check it out and let me know what you think. Any feedback is, is always welcome. Uh, uh, email me or tweet me whatever uh, feedback you may have or anything you may want help with. Uh, and uh, again, you can download it uh, there. Uh, so that's all I have. Uh, we'll take any questions. Any questions? Yes. In the DSL, your plans to add any other columns to fold into attributes or either edges or vertices? Uh, what do you mean, other columns? So right now, you can define an edge as a link that exists if, if those two records can be joined. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Uh, using the relational data. Mm -hmm. uh, what if you, you could make it? Well, I don't want to say conditional. One, the edge weights that are counts, so number of records, or edge weights that exist based on some condition on a yet number column. Yeah, that's that's actually a really good question. So the question was, can can you have can you actually also extract uh, edge weights, for example, right, or, or uh, edge properties? Uh, so uh, using using the system right now, you can't. Uh, um, and the reason for that is is because we're uh, for, for the purposes of the research project, we were focusing on being able to sort of load in these graphs as efficiently as possible. And there's an issue with uh, if you wanted to do something like um, uh, um, also extract 
sort of aggre uh, so uh, an edge count in that in that regard would be an aggregation here, uh, and we're still sort of working through the details of how you would do that as efficiently as possible. Because originally, you would, you would have to extract the entire graph, and we're trying to look into ways uh, 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 into how you can sort of extract very large graphs without having to, to materialize all of them. Uh, so and that's sort of more of the, of the research part of the project. And I'll be happy to talk to anyone about, about this stuff. So uh, yeah, that's a really good question. And we're going to work on it. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, different. I so you 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 can actually have more than one node statement. So you can sort of ha you, you you can say I want customers connected. Uh, 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 so I you can have two node statements. You can say, I want two types of nodes, customer nodes and supplier nodes, right? And you can have an edge statement that connects those two. So you are able to do that, yeah. Any other questions? All right. Oh, yes. Is the underlying implementation in Java as well? Yeah, the underlying implementation is the right now is in Java, and uh, and currently we've we're supporting two data. We're, we're currently we're only supporting Postgres and MySQL, uh, and SQLite. Sorry, uh, but uh, um, so the the overall vision is that that we're actually seeing the database here as a black box, right? So as so, as long as the database has a SQL interface over it, uh, then you can use this this system no problem over. It. You just have to do a little bit of work for, to integrate different systems uh, and different sort of uh, syntaxes of SQL, basically. Thank you. That I, I basically used. Um, uh, so I used Bootstrap for for the uh, for the front end, and then I used um, uh, D three to 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 for the graph visualization. Thank you. Yeah. That's, uh, the, when it's trying to the data, does it need any kind of temporary storage? Uh, the, the uh, temporary. So, so for the for the Python wrapper and and for the web application, what what it actually does is it, it loads the data into uh, because it uses Java, it, it loads it into into basically the JVM, right? So it, it loads it into into memory, and then because we haven't implemented uh, uh, sort of because the system is native in Java, you can't directly access it through Python. You have to serialize it. So in order for you to serialize it, you 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 have to basically expand the entire graph. Uh, uh, and uh, I'm not sure. So you, what was the question My again? Question was, uh, does it use any kind of disk or uh, as an intermediate uh, place for you know, storing things? So everything is in memory. Mm -hmm. Everything is in memory in the in the Java implementation. Yes. Even as it's expanded. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, the, the, I mean, the database. The database is uh, is written on disk, but that's about it. We're not using. We're not using any intermediate storage. Right. Uh, okay. And if you have a distributed system, uh, uh, each instance, each instance runs in your own JVM, right? So um, that is, uh, if, if you want it to expand, the only way it can expand is by adding more memory to your own JVM. Uh, yes. Yes. In terms of like the size of the graph that you want to analyze, yes, and that's uh, always talking about sort of a shared memory system, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because currently uh, we we can't do distributed. No. It doesn't support distributed, but you can uh, uh, if you have sort of enough uh, uh, enough memory, you can extract uh, a graph through the Python wrapper, for example, and serialize it to disk, and then take that GML file, or, file or, or whatever else format you might want and load it into something like GraphX or anything else you might want. Any plans to take that and use Redis as an intermediate layer? Any plans to use Redis? Uh, um, not not specifically, but I would be interested in hearing uh, ideas about this. Yeah. Yeah. Did you say do you have plans to support Oracle? Uh, sure. 
Yes, I mean, as, as soon as, as long as anything has a SQL uh, uh, interface over it, we, we could support it. So, definitely. Sorry? If it, does it have a SQL interface? It comes from like an Elasticsearch where you want to returning results into JSON and then we need some kind of graphic, you know, graphic layer on top of that. Uh, so, so you're saying loading in JSON or? or yeah, so your source is SQL. Uh huh. It's stored where, though? It's coming from Elasticsearch. Okay. Uh, does does Elasticsearch, does Elasticsearch have SQL capabilities? No. So we could we could take we could take. Mm -hmm. So the the whole idea here is that uh, uh, our parser translates our our language into SQL. So uh, that's that's the only issue here. All right, thank you very much.